Did you read this week's ATD letter? It's too easy, I got you. As a father, you have a particular set of skills. Skills you have acquired over your lifetime. Skills that will make your offspring capable and unstoppable. If you waste them, that will be the end of your legacy. Stay focused, be disciplined, be vigilant. Attack the day. Now let's get into this letter. Another day. Transformation. It's a powerful word that resonates with me as a father. Growing up, I often find myself drawn to two contrasting heroes who in many ways have shaped my approach to fatherhood, Vegeta and Goku from the Dragon Ball series. Vegeta with his royal lineage was the epitome of strength and discipline, often expressing his deep care through a facade of anger and tough love. He pushed his sons to the edge, not out of malice, but from a deep seated belief in his potential. Goku, on the other hand, grew up an orphan, a carefree and optimistic outlook, coupled with a strong and nurturing demeanor. His compassion and resilience taught him to always look on the brighter side, shaping his unique approach to overcoming life's challenges. Two figures, each strong and nurturing in their unique ways, pushed their sons to new limits, setting a high standard for them to aspire to. Observing them, I see reflections of myself, a blend of Vegeta's fiery discipline and Goku's boundless compassion. I began my journey as a father under the shadows of strength and anger. Over time, I've embedded patience, calm, and stillness into my DNA, understanding that these two are strengths. The evolution in my character allows me to guide my children through their mistakes. Rather than shield them from every potential fall, the old saying rings true in my ears. You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. As a father, my role is to lead by example, provide the tools and set the boundaries, but it's up to them to drink, to use the lessons and tools I provided to forge their paths. A few weeks ago, I introduced you all to the mastery method and approach that aids in understanding ourselves better. It also enhances our relationships with those we love and lead. You need to reflect on how you can transform to meet the evolving challenges of fatherhood, leadership, and life. All right, I'm Drew, and this is the ATD Chronicles, where I go over the ATD letter that goes out every week to help you engineer tools to attack the day. This week, we're going to talk about Alpha to Omega. That was the title of the newsletter. Right. And one of the things that rang true for me is the transformative process that I went through from going to recognizing that I was started off my fatherhood journey with anger, with strength and wanting to be more of a strong, silent type. But over time, I realized I had to start showing compassion, especially with a daughter, you know, and that was one of the hardest things for me as a father, as a man was with my sons growing up with a father who was pretty stern, pretty specific and strategic with his words. A man, a few words, right? Sometimes that came off very aggressive at times to my daughter. And so as the time has gone on, I've learned to progress and change, be more softer, be more caring, more, more, more compassionate to make sure that I'm saying things that she needs to hear that allow her to stay in her femininity like my wife. So that's one of the things you have to do as a man running your household. You have to be able to shift, manipulate yourself and strategically use the skill sets you have to be a better father. So what does it mean to transform as a father? How do the traits from the example I gave about Vegeta and Goku, how does that resonate with you? How are you going to transform and change and be a better man, a better father, a better husband, a better leader? How are you going to do it? So I gave the example for Vegeta, for Goku, 
and how Vegeta was more strong, silent, fiery, fierce, and disciplined and focused. And Goku kind of came off a lot of times as just being easygoing, fun loving, compassionate, very caring, loving. And those of you who watched this content before, you know, I resonate with the villain. I resonate with that stern, strong, silent, sometimes evil, maniacal characteristic because that's just me. That's what that's what's appealing, you know. So what, what's yours? What did what did you resonate more if you read the letter? And if you didn't read the letter, just by me giving you that breakdown, what works for you, you know? Which one do you resonate with more? Put it down in the comments. Do you resonate more with Vegeta as a father or a leader? Do you resonate more with Goku? I just like to know your thoughts. Like I told y'all earlier, I started off like really angry, strong, silent type, really being aggressive, especially because I started out with sons. My daughter was the last, you know? So when you have a daughter, you have to act differently. You have to be strong and nurturing. And I've said this before, so being strong and being nurturing, those are kind of on the surface, they come off to seem very opposite. But if you're very nurturing, there's a certain level of strength that comes with that too. There's a certain level of compassion. And that's one of the things that I've recognized over time with working on being a better father, with being a better husband, with being a better leaser, leader. That's one of the things I had to do is be more compassionate be more caring, be more loving. Because one of the things with leading your children, giving them all the tools and helping them to make the best decision, you gotta let them fall sometimes. You know, it's a quote in the movie, I think Batman, Alfred says, uh, no, his father says, you know, hey Bruce, why do we fall? And he was like, so we can pick ourselves back up. Something along those lines, right? I'm paraphrasing here. But I mean, when you fall, you have to pick yourself up. When you, If you've ever ridden a bike, you know that if you fall, you got to get back on that bike and keep on riding. You got to keep on working at it. And so as a father, as a leader, you have to make sure that you're willing to let the people that you're leading fall at times so they can learn from their mistakes and become leaders themselves. You know, if you never give them an opportunity, how can you ever understand what you've been teaching or what you've been showing is actually working. So that's one of the main things that being compassionate and loving and nurturing and having patience and stillness. And as if you watch the, the last YouTube or listen to the last podcast, cause I, oh yeah, we on Apple podcast now, you know what I mean? So we, I just meant to let, make, let, make sure y'all know that, that we on Apple now, we on Spotify. So the squad, if you with me, go check it out. If you driving, you don't wanna, you can't watch YouTube. You can listen to me now. Bet, bet. <clears throat> so shameless plug, shameless plug. So one of the things that I resonated with, um, understanding that being nurturing, compassionate and stillness, I've been working on my meditation and sitting still. And you need to be able to be in a certain level of stillness in order to be a great leader, because you got to be able to fall back and watch as things unfold. There's a book, I believe, by Ryan Holiday. Um, He's got like a couple books I've read. Ego is the enemy. And there's another one. I think it's the digital minimalist or it's another book. I was watching the video and he has another one that talks about stillness. And that's my next read. And one of the things that you have to do is you have to be able to be still, be patient, be calm and watch things unfold. So when I talked about the mastery method from a week ago, when I talked about the mastery method, I used it and I discussed how you can use it to help craft a better understanding of who you're dealing with, who you're working with. You know, if you're a realtor, um, if you're a consultant, if you're just running your household, it might seem a little extra for a family to go through a mastery method, to have them go through and fill out their, and to understand, to get a better understanding of them. You think, oh, why, do, why can't I just ask these questions? And you don't have to go through and have them fill out the form, right? But you can initially, use the question, the line of questioning to get a better understanding of your spouse, to get a better understanding of your children. And these things will help you to be a better leader, to learn how to initially be the best version of yourself, right? Because if you do not understand what personalities you're dealing with, then that may be why you're butting heads more often than not. So you have to understand 
as a leader, it's best to understand who you're leading. I got a quick question for you. How can using the mastery method help you to be a better father, to be a better leader, right? You need, you need to ask yourself those questions. Put it down in the comments. Let me know what you think. So it was a video I saw by the guy named Zen Hustler. And he talked about how he had the experience of he was being a, I'm trying to keep my channel clean, but a B, right? He was growing up to be a B. His voice was silenced. He didn't have a voice. He was indecisive. He went through a lot of things, racing. And, and to sum it all up, go watch the video. I'll tag it in here. He basically was saying how most men these days are silenced who were raised by a single mother or just weren't shown or coddled in the way of being a man. And I thought about that. So essentially what he was talking about was he was being raised to be a beta, right? And if you read the article, I went through briefly on alpha, beta, sigma, omega, gamma, and delta, right? All these are different personality types. And with these different personality types comes a certain level of strength and a certain level of weaknesses. But by understanding your strengths and understanding your weaknesses, you can, you don't, you're not stuck in between one or the other, right? You can become the best version of yourself by understanding what initially personality type you had. And so he went down and broke down how a, a man needed to go on a journey. And I, I put a deep comment in there expressing, explaining some stuff that was going on with my son and how I had, this is part of the reason why I'm putting this letter out. Everything, like I said, I'm doing to build a legacy and build blueprints and tools and, and readings for my children and future generations to come. So that's one of the things I urge you to do. Write down things, journal, and put together your own blueprint and your own plan to make sure that you're able to be the best leader that you can be. So to get back on topic, with him talking about the Zen Hustler, I'm sorry, Zen Hustler describing what he was going through, he moved to Thailand. And from that journey, being on his own, he was able to establish himself as a man. Now, I didn't watch any of his other content. I don't know what else he's doing, but from listening to this young man, I could see my son in a sense in this situation because a man does need challenge. Anyone needs challenge who wants to be a leader to change. And if it doesn't challenge you, it doesn't change you, right? And that's why I have like this 80-45 challenge uh, that I do and I do quarterly. And right now it's also up at the bottom, shameless plug, you know, you can check it out. And it's a challenge that I do every quarter, right? For 45 days with my children and myself and anybody that joins in. And we challenge ourselves physically, emotionally, and mentally to become and get to the next level. So anyway, I say all that to say is he understood that to be a man, he needed to go through challenge and strife in life to transform and get to the next level. And every man has to go through challenges and anybody has to go through challenges if you want to change. And that's one of the things I've, I've been through a lot of challenges. One of the challenges was when I was in the military that transformed and changed my life tremendously and made me the man I am today. You know, I had to overcome PTSD for years and I still deal with it every single day. So challenge does present change. And if you don't have any s certain level of um, strife, chaos in your life, you can never learn what you're made of. So to sum up Zen Hustler, good video, go check it out. I thought it was pretty good. It gave me some insights, gave me some perspective from my letter. And I definitely wanted to give him a shout out because he's putting out good content. So when I went down the path of breaking down personality types, I watched a couple of different videos. I'll link them here, here, here. And I also just picked up this book. It's called you can't really see it. Oh, there we go. All right. All right. So that's a new read for me. It's going to go through further the personality types. Now in the letter, I went over six personality types, alpha, beta, gamma, omega, delta, and sigma. I wanted to go in order. I didn't think of the way they were in the letter. And each of those personality types has its own strengths and weaknesses. And understanding the personality types, you can craft and become the best version of yourself. And understanding who in your house, who in your organization has those different personality types will also help you to craft, navigate, and 
work within your business, work within your family, work within whatever you're doing to make it better. So each one has its own specific characteristics and I'm not going to go into detail. That's why I told you that the emails, um, sorry, the, the YouTube links at the top that you could go through because I want you to read, right? And I also want to have a conversation. So ask me questions and do the research yourself. You know, like I said, I can lead you to water, but I can't make you drink it. So I give you as much as I can. It's your, it's your job to do the rest on the rest of the journey if it's important enough to you. With the different personality types, I will say that taking opposing maybe a, a stronger one and a weaker one, right? And Alpha has more prowess, more confidence, and a Beta has more empathy, right? And sometimes that empathy can be looked at as a bad thing, looked at as a pushover, and usually a beta is more of an employee. Easy to take and follow orders, very loyal. Whereas an alpha wants to be in charge, but needs a beta in order to be an alpha. So if you take those two traits together, right, you can understand that if you are more alpha and you're running a household, you need the betas, the employees, the, the people up under you to follow you. Because without them, just like in a wolf pack, if you ever watched any of those horror movies uh, like Teen Wolf, um, what was it? Wolf in High School with Michael J. Fox. Anyway, if you watch any of the movies or if you just learn and do National Geographic de uh, research on like wolves and packs, there has to be a leader and there has to be followers. At the end of the day, that's how it works. That's how the world works. You need somebody to lead and you need somebody to follow that leader. So if you understand that, you understand they go hand in hand, but you also, as an alpha, need to understand how to navigate and move in a way that still works with those betas, right? In order to be the best version of yourself. And as a man of a household, at times you are an alpha, right? And I don't wanna to go too much into details on, on, on my belief, but my belief is that as a father, right? You can't be a, or rather, what am I trying to say? As a father, you end up becoming, in my opinion, just give you the, the sneak peek that you become all of those because you have to move and navigate through all of them. And if I would have to say the best personalities for a father would be Alpha, would be Sigma, and would be Omega, right? And if you read and do your research, you'll understand why I don't say gamma why i don't say delta and why i don't say beta those are probably the worst for a leader you know um but you need to have each one of those personality i'm sorry personality characteristics to be the best leader and i watched a video on 19 keys and he broke down his understanding he said he's more of a sigma and it brings me to my next stop topic right so I don't know if you guys watch X-Men 97. I'm a, get, I'm a big nerd when it comes to comics heroes. And one of the, my heroes growing up was Wolverine. And to find out that Wolverine was more of a Sigma, it, it, was under, it was understanding, right? So a Sigma can be a leader. A Sigma doesn't have to necessarily be like, you know he's the leader, but he's the leader. People will follow him. People will do whatever he says. But at the same time, a Sigma also has his own mission. And he doesn't really care what anybody else says. I mean, think about Wolverine. Wolverine didn't give a dang what Charles Xavier would tell him to do, right? And y'all should check out X-Men 97. It's on Disney. And, and if you like me, you got the fire stick. It's broken, jailbreaking. You can watch whatever you want. But one of the things with, with, with Wolverine was he would always do what he wanted. Like he would do what the mission required and he was always willing to go after something for the greater good. But if it didn't make sense, he didn't give a dang what, what everybody else was doing. Like, oh, we all doing this? No, I'm not doing that. I'm going over here to go do what I got to do. And if y'all don't get in where you fit in, you know, and so I, I resonate a lot with that because that's why, like me being on um, a real estate team, one of the things I noticed was everything that they were doing. I never wanted to do. It didn't make sense to me. Now, when it came down to moving the office, when it came down to doing various things, I was down for it. But certainly it didn't make sense. I had my own thing. And I mean, I think most realtors probably would resonate with that is that you probably are more of a sigma. You know, um, if you if you're running the team, though, you might have to be an alpha, you know, but initially, if you're on the team, you kind of got to be a sigma. You got to do what's best for you, you know, but that's I digress. That's a whole nother topic. 
But just these different personality types are very pivotal and important in being a great leader, great provider, and everything that you do. So I know I threw y'all threw a lot at y'all, and I know I gave y'all a lot of insights. And I once again freaked it, did it a little differently uh, for the for the for the newsletter for the ATD Chronicles because I'm getting better each week. I'm doing my best to showcase everything I'm working on because if it doesn't challenge you, it doesn't change you. And I'm constantly working to challenge myself to change um, people's lives, to change your life. And so it's one of the things I just wanted to do this week was to put out this different information on personality types. So there'll be links and ways to get in contact with me. Drop a, drop comments, please. Let me know what you think. Let's chop it up. Let's talk it up about it. You can check me out on all socials. You know, it probably ran across through the whole video. Yeah. So I appreciate y'all for tuning in today. Please like, share, subscribe. Continue to come back weekly. Like I said again, we're on Apple Podcasts. Some of the up, uh, videos have been uploaded. Give me some time. I'm working on that. My team, my kids, <laughs> will be pushing out that content soon for y'all to see. Uh, but the YouTube videos, the weekly newsletter is all here. And I look forward to speaking with y'all. So the road ahead is long and hard. No place for the week. You must be a warrior. Attack the day.